In this video, I'll be installing the newly released Rodan V head unit in the Forerunner. I'll show you how to remove the old unit, how to wire everything up in the new one, and the features and highlights, including wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Stick around. We have the unit all installed and I've been playing with it for the last day, trying a lot of little things out. I am going to jump into how everything works here and what the display looks like and all those good things. So I'm going to take this through uh, some long term testing and we will check back with it to make sure it has no issues. I know other head units in that price range uh, have had some kind of bugs or issues. Um, as of right now, using it for the last couple hours, uh, I actually took it on a, a long drive this morning and I was testing it out and I really haven't come across any issues that I was hearing about on other videos that I've seen. So um, my initial impression is this looks like the, the SATA or the SATA head unit that I've seen in some videos on. I can see by the layout of it and I've watched some of the videos on the wiring of it. And, and I believe that the wiring is a little bit different on this unit. Also, the interface is different on this unit. After reaching out to Roden V about the differences between their unit and the DeSeta, this is the information they provided to me. Though the appearance is the same, the internals are indeed different. It's got a super crisp screen uh, when it comes to the videos, when it comes to the whole interface and the apps and everything like that. I'm thoroughly impressed with that. It looks factory. I actually opted to go with the satin black because I may be changing the color on these side trim pieces to black as well. I kind of wanted a change from the silver. I did not like the way the silver looked. Uh, but this is night and day difference between the OEM head unit and this head unit. Now, if it continues to operate the way it has been, as I've been playing with it and using it, then I will be even that much more impressed. So let's get into how it looks, how it boots up. I'm gonna see if I can change the camera angle and get a better idea of the quality of the screen. Um, I'm gonna show you how it connects to my phone and a few other little features of this unit. I'm hoping this picks up the details of the unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the key in the on position. I have my phone here, um, Bluetooth is on and it will automatically connect to my phone through the auto link, so. So it's obviously Android based. It's basically an, an Android tablet. So here's the, the basic interface. And right now it's gonna connect automatically to my phone. So it's wireless. I, I'm an Android guy. I'm not an Apple guy. My daughter is an Apple person and we used her phone already. Um, we did the Apple CarPlay and it worked. I've never used it before, but she said it was working great. This connects automatically also to the Android as it does to the Apple CarPlay. So everything is wireless. Um, it connects seamlessly and pretty quickly. I put my little apps over here on the side screen. This is my Spotify, which I listen to mostly. Sometimes I listen to the radio, but if I touch that, it'll be a big display for my Spotify here. And then my, I use Waze Maps instead of uh, some of the other ones. So I put my Waze there. And then if I go back to my Spotify here, this goes to all my Spotify library. So I can choose anything here. We'll do country favorites and we'll do any kind of song here. So um, it's pretty seamless. It connects quickly and it's not going to pick up on this, but the quality of the sound over the OEM unit is, ex is very noticeable. It's a lot crisper. It's a lot cleaner. The bass hits a little bit harder. The treble and the mid-range sound a lot nicer. And you have a lot of other adjustments. I think this has a built-in amplifier. I'm not 100% sure, but it sure sounds like it does. So I'm gonna lower this down. Actually, we'll pause that. So if I wanna go back to maps, if I wanna switch this around again, I'll just hit that. It'll swap it back around. It'll put my Spotify here and the maps over here. And then I can, now watch, when I hit the search bar here, It'll actually, I'm gonna split my phone here, hold on. Oh, hopefully this shows. So when I hit the search bar here, you'll see it pull up on my phone. 
So it says Android Auto, and then I can either type in up here or I can type in over here uh, some kind of address. So I'll just put in Home Depot. And then I'll put it on the Home Depots around here. So if we go to Home Depot here, I can hit go. Looks like you're my ride. Not sure if you've got experience saving the galaxy, but you're about to get some. Let's go. So I can take the I can take the, the navigation through Waze and it'll automatically go through the the data on my phone. I don't need a Wi-Fi or anything like that. One of the features also I love about this is I love these knobs. I hate having a purely digital flat radio. So if I want to mute it, I just press that button, mute. But I love the I love to be able to control it manually and to scan the radio stations manually. All right, so you can change your apps right here any way you want. These are the ones that I want. This is this microphone I love because you just hit it. And I'll give you an example. I'm going to text my wife through voice. Text Juliana. Juliana, sure. What's the message? Testing the hands-free text messaging from the new head unit. I got testing the hands-free text messaging from the new head unit. Ready to send it? Yes. Sending your message. So this is one thing that I love about this unit is that is I can do the hands-free text messaging I, and you can pretty much do hands-free anything with that microphone. Um, you can do the calling, you can do anything that you want. Hopefully she'll respond back and you'll see the notification will actually pop up here on the side. This little button, oh, she did respond back. So that's a message, let's see. Awesome, I got it, it works. Do you want to reply? No. Okay, so that's, okay, so that's another cool thing is that I got the notification and everything worked as it should there. This button on the bottom left will actually pull up um, all my apps from my phone, not my apps. It'll pull up some of the things from my phone that I can use and then put on this side if I wanted to use that. So if I wanted maps instead of ways, I can actually swap that out, but I like the ways there. So if you hit the home screen, the music here is the hard drive music. So if you had a flash drive and you plugged it into one of those USB ports, which I have tucked behind the head unit right now, but I can route them anywhere I really wanted to. But if I put it in a drive and I uploaded music to here, it would come in here. So they, they preloaded it. They preloaded it with Hotel California coming digitally from here. And it sounds really great. So if I pause that, we hit the back button. We can hit the radio. I have pre-station the radio. I can hit the... I have my presets all in here. It responds super fast. You can also, instead of turning the dial, you can use your finger and kind of drag the stations around. If you go back to the home page, you can hit navigation. That'll be their navigation screen. Um, I'm not going to use it, but if you needed to use it, you have another option for navigation here. So let's go back to the home screen. I'm going to quit that. Um, if you swipe to the left, you'll have some of the things that are programmed in already. If I needed to connect them to the phone, I'd hit auto link and put in the input for that phone, or I can go through Bluetooth also over here. Um, this is the equalizer, which I thought was pretty cool. You have all these options right here, and I was kind of playing with them. Uh, a bunch of equalizer options, and I played with the bass a little bit here. I like to tweak the bass sometimes when I listen to my rap music, and... Let's see, I'm going to go back one more and you can hit, let's see, on the balance right there, you can uh, fade, fade in, fade out, or left to right. So that worked very well. We'll go back again and then that's it for this one. But there's a bunch of other stuff here. This is for an um, AV in, which I have not used. Video, so if I want to go to video, it's this button right here, and they have a pre-programmed video. You can kind of see how crisp. You can, I'll put it a little bit loud so you can hear too. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on how unbelievably beautiful this is, um, but it's super crisp. The colors are amazing. So video, I think, would look very good on here. Bass sounds wonderful. So I'll just lower that down. 
so you can upload videos and whatever else you want on here as well. It's got a huge 128 gigabyte hard drive for a head unit, which is pretty impressive. Um, on the bottom right here are the apps. So you can add the apps that you wanted to. So these are the apps that come with it, the first two pages, uh, photo gallery, video, things like that. And then you can go to Google Chrome if you're on Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi, you would swipe down and connect. I don't really see a need for that unless I have to update the radio. Um, but I did connect. It's not a problem at all. If I swipe again, these are some of the apps that I downloaded myself. So actually, let's do this. Let's connect to Wi-Fi. And let's try out YouTube real fast. So I think it may have connected already. Let's see. So if I go to YouTube, yeah, I'll go to search. We'll go to AZ Overland. And I'll pull up my page here. Let's see, right there. So if I go to videos, we can go to my latest video, which is the Bilstein install for the rears. And we're fortunate we have some ads, but we'll skip those. So this is my latest video here that I did on a Bilstein install. Um, it's super crisp. It looks great. You can also use this while driving. And while I certainly do not recommend that you do that. All right. So, so let's stop this and let's go back. We well, actually just go back to home. This is my Bluetooth. I wanted to connect other devices. So you see I have G's iPhone. That's my daughter and my Pixel Pro. Um, but her Apple CarPlay worked great. I've heard on other head units that Apple CarPlay wirelessly, well, I've heard on other head units, the Apple CarPlay was having issues. It would automatically disconnect after 10 minutes or, or so, and it would become quite annoying. And that was a deal breaker for a lot of people. So I took the car out this morning for a long drive. I used my Waze and I used my Spotify for my Android and I had zero issues. Now we've used my daughter's iPhone through the wireless Apple Play, uh, through the wireless CarPlay, and it connected and she had no issues, but we have not done it for more than 10 minutes. So we're gonna take a drive, we're gonna do the same thing with hers. Everything works on the steering wheel, they coincide, even the phone controls work on the steering wheel, which is great. A couple things that I did not expect, if I open my door, you'll see that it pops up right here. It works for the hood as well. I have not tried the tailgate, but I would assume it works for the tailgate. I never had that before on my OEM stereo. I had it by the speedometer display in the center. One thing also that's cool that I liked is I'm going to turn the AC on here um, and you'll see the you'll see the screen change. All right, let me turn the key in the on position. So this is the climate. So it'll give you this. It, it kind of pops off pretty fast. So but if I put this on, it'll tell you what zones, what temperature, It'll tell you where it's coming out and all this kind of stuff. So I think that's pretty, pretty darn cool. I never had that before. Um, you can't control through here, but it does tell you exactly what's going on. So it's easy to determine. All right, so I have the reverse camera on. I think there is a way in settings that you can actually change this to make it a shorter screen, which actually should give a nice crisp picture. As soon as I put in reverse, I have no issues. The picture pops right up. Um, I'm just going to figure out a way where I can get the settings to make that a shorter screen. Uh, I haven't played with that yet. That's actually a button up here. Oh, there you go. I just found it. This button up here. Um, and it's for parking too. I'm not exactly sure what this is just yet. There's some kind of parking assist, but it shortened it up and it gave me a much better picture. So if I press that button, it goes to widescreen. Yeah, I'll do it from up here. So that button goes to short, wide short with a little car here. I'm gonna have to play with that and see what happens when I back up as I'm driving. That might give you some kind of warning indicator, but I like that. I am going to do a follow-up video, maybe within four weeks or so, as I get more hours under my belt using all the features of this unit. I'll let you know if there's any kind of issues that I come across. As of right now, I love it. It's a night and day difference between this and the OEM. I feel like I've been brought into the 21st century finally with my 4Runner. I love this vehicle. This is probably the one thing that just was lackluster. It wasn't bad, but it was just lackluster. Um, 
install was not as bad as I had thought. Stay tuned because towards the end of the video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step on the wiring, on how to remove the factory radio and how to put the new radio in. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Like I said, uh, it was pretty straightforward, but I had zero instructions to go off of. That's one thing with this unit is they provide you basically with nothing. So you're kind of on your own. It's a little intimidating. It took me more time to transfer over the vents, the hazard light, and this mounting system that I have than it did for me to actually install the radio. So transferring all this stuff is actually pretty easy. Uh, the vents were the hardest part with the clips, but I did do a video when I did the video for mounting this on how to take those vents out. So watch that if you want in a little bit more detail. I'll actually put a link to that um, on my end screen. So you'll see that pop up and it works beautifully. So hopefully it'll continue to work beautifully. I'll, like I said, I'll do the follow-up video. I'll let you know if I come across any issues. I'll put a link to this one down below and stay tuned for the installation right after this. So this is a Roden V head unit specifically made for 2014 through 2019 Forerunners. They retail for about $560. Like I said, this was sent to me to try out. I guess it's just released to the market. Um, the whole trim package and the radio, everything is integrated just as you see it. It comes as a package. This is the black. It also comes in silver trim. Their instructions are pretty much non-existent. This is, this is the extent of the instructions is this little diagram here with some basic idea of what the cables are and then a little tiny pictures of step-by-step, step, everything of which we've done already with the exception of wiring, and they don't go into great detail about the wiring here. We're gonna to try to figure and make sense of all these wires and see if we can get this thing to work. First step is to remove the two side trim pieces and these will just pull right out. They can be difficult to get behind. You can use a, a trim removal tool Those are the clips that press right in. That's one. The next step is to remove the whole piece with the three knobs, and that will also pull right out. There is a electrical connection in the back. I don't think it's necessary to remove that. It, it will just lay it here gently and then we'll see four 10 millimeter bolts that are gonna hold the actual unit in. With those four bolts out, we'll go ahead and And there's the head unit. I figured out how to wire this guy up and I'm gonna show you right now what I came up with. I already installed it and it's working. I took it back out again. So we'll go over exactly how I did it. I did label some of the things here as you can see. I have the mic, USB 2, the USB 3 on the outside and in the center of that is the SIM card. This is the main wire harness that we're going to use. And believe it or not, there's only one connection for the back of the head unit. With the main wire harness, we're gonna bring this over and connect it right here. The second one we're gonna use, this is only the second plug that gets into the back of the head unit. And it has these auxiliary cables. So this one will connect right here. And I found out that this actually is the one for the backup camera that I could not figure out. So you can see that all these have the white caps on them. I took the white cap off this one. It says camera in. And if you go back to the main harness, you have two yellow RCAs. They both say camera. When I put the first one in, it was a little frustrated because it didn't work. So I put an X on that one. I tried the next one. That one worked. 
So we'll plug that into the camera end port. Now, this is this one here with the blue funky connection. That's for navigation. And that'll plug it, and this will plug into the blue port right here. This will have to be routed out somewhere, and they use double sided tape so you can stick that to your windshield or some other place, maybe on the dashboard where you can get a good signal if you're using this for GPS or for navigation. This funky guy here, I'm not sure what it is but it does have the connection and that also goes into the main wire harness. This guy right here, which has the female, goes into the male right there. This is pretty much ready to go in. So what I have left over is this. I'm not using that. I believe that's maybe for the front camera. I'm not 100% sure. I have an external mic. We're going to plug that in, even though I won't be routing it just yet. That'll go into my mic port, which I labeled. We have a SIM card connection. I'm not going to be using a SIM card either, but I will plug that in to the SIM slot. So we have two USBs, one to two and the three. I'm not going to use that one. I may use this one. As of right now, I'm not, but I will plug it in with the purple plug, and that'll go in the back of the head unit also. The last thing we have here is another antenna. It has this connection. Got a little crowded up here. We have two antenna ports and one I actually, this little stubby guy, I actually already screwed in. That's gonna be for Wi-Fi. This one with the red, I'm gonna pull that off. That's for 4G. I don't think we need it. So I'll take this and I'll screw it into the 4G port and I'll leave that behind the head unit because to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be needing that. All my connections are there. Everything here will plug into the main harness. I'll show you that in just a moment. And we're pretty much ready to install that. Before we do that, we need to take everything off the original head unit and transfer it over to here. And that's going to include two vents, your hazard button, the brackets here on the side. And of course, my favorite, the bullet point mounting system. So I'm gonna have to realign, redrill, and mount it over here. There's only two wires, which is this one. It comes from the top up here, and that is navigation antenna. And this gray one right here which is also uh, either a mic or an antenna for something. Other than that, everything else is connected from the factory harness, and we're ready to put this in. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found some of this information useful. I will be doing follow-up videos on this head unit to ensure that everything is still working properly and as it should be. I'll leave a link to this one in the description below and in the comments as well. If you can give the video a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. And thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.